Welcome to segment number four in our continuing coverage of New Hampshire versus Adam Montgomery, the weapons trial. Adam Montgomery, the father of missing Harmony Montgomery, will be standing trial for her murder later in the year. Right now we're witnessing the weapons charges against him in court. Let's head there now. You had gone to the grand jury in March and that didn't come out of nowhere. At some point, police before the grand jury came out and talked to you. Does that sound right? Yes. And um, at that time, uh, and going back to earlier, at one point you said that you hadn't touched the guns at another one. You did say that you moved the guns to the couch to be near, from the bed to the couch to be near them. Correct. Um, the police asked you about the firearms in that interview sometime before the grand jury, right? Yes. And at the time you knew that Kayla was in jail? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. You knew Adam was in jail? I. Uh, think so, yeah. Okay. Ms. Green, I'm just going to ask you to please keep Sorry. your voice on again. I know it's a big room, but it is important that everybody be able to hear me. Okay. And you were living away from everybody in Manchester, right? Right. And um, you had gone through the rehab and you had a steady job, right? Yes. Feeling like you're separated from your former life, right? Yes. Um, not entirely separated from Chris because you two share a daughter. Correct. Um, and you still talk to Chris. Correct. Um, so when we talked about uh, not liking the guns and not touching the guns versus moving the guns to the couch, when the police asked you in the interview before the grand jury about the guns, you told them that you like to use the firearms at the range and would never get rid of them, right? Right. And uh, that's when you said that the fourth firearm wasn't taken because it was in your vehicle, right? Correct. So... Um, the little guns. I don't shoot the big ones, just the little ones. Okay. So in saying that uh, you like the firearms and would never get rid of them, that does, does that mean that you like the little firearms and would never get rid of the little ones? I don't shoot the big ones. Okay, so when you said you like the firearms and wouldn't get rid of them, were you talking about the little ones? The well, all of them. Okay. Okay. And... Uh, when you said that you like to use the firearms at the range so you wouldn't get rid of them, you weren't talking about all of them. Right. Just the little ones, right? Um, Pistols. Correct. 45 and the Ruger? 38. And um, Now, you talked earlier about rumors um, that you said led you to kind of look at Adam differently about this, right? Correct. And uh, the rumors actually came from Mike Sullivan, right? Correct. And um, originally, you were uh, accusing Ish, Ishmael, Ish, sorry. Ishmael Garcia and his friend Manny. I might have. Okay. And um, you and Mike talked about that, and later on Mike came to you, and after that you started accusing Adam. Yeah, he told me. Okay. And um, When you were talking to the police on that interview before the grand jury, uh, the name of Ishmael Garcia was brought up, right? Uh, me, probably. 
Okay. Uh, you told the police, um, let's see, that you were somewhat familiar with Ishmael Garcia, right? Yep. Yes. And you told them that you thought you communicated through Facebook, but you didn't have a name or anything like that. Or was that about Manny? I'm, I'm confused at the question. Yes. I messed it up. Sustained. Just rephrase yes. the questions, please. Yes. Um, <clears throat> didn't tell him that you regu regularly got drugs from Ish back in 2019, right? Uh, tell who? The police officer who was questioning you. I didn't tell them in 2019? No. You didn't tell the police officer in the interview prior to grand jury in 2022 that in 2019 you um, regularly got drugs from Ishmael Garcia, right? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and uh, when they asked you about Ish, you told them you believed that Adam and Ish would have sold the guns for drugs and or money, right? Maybe, yeah. Okay. And... Um, You didn't tell them that you sometimes let Ish take the car and the 38, right? I did tell the police that. I just don't know when I told them. You told the prosecutors that a week or so ago, right? <coughs> um, I've been saying it the whole time, I believe. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> and I think that you said, <clears throat> yes, you put the 45 back in the drawer before Chris got home and just simply didn't notice that the other gun wasn't there. I said there was a possibility that I put it back. I don't remember. I just know I had it, and that's why it wasn't taken. Okay. And you are aware that it was in the drawer before when Chris got home? Sure. Overruled. Is that right? I just said I don't remember putting it back in the drawer, but I could have. But you recognize that it, you were aware when Chris came home that it was... We had the 45, so it wasn't missing. And it, it's something that Chris saw or talked about or realized you knew it was not missing and he knew it was not missing on the night that he got home because it was in the drawer, right? I don't remember. Okay. But do you remember that it was, uh, never mind. So then there was uh, the grand jury. You remember talking to the grand jury? Yes. And that is still when you are out of Manchester, right? Correct. Clean, right? Correct. Working and um, living up north. Correct. Oh, sorry, one more thing about that interview before the grand jury is that you did tell police that there was crack uh, in your home when you woke up the morning before Chris came home, right? Yes. So when you went to the grand jury, uh, you swore to tell the truth, right? Yes. And you said that Adam came over because the two of them were trying to get drugs, <clears throat> right? 
We were, yes. Two of you, sorry. Yes. And you said that Adam also wanted to get some to bring back to Kayla, right? Correct. And <clears throat> one of the reasons you may have wanted Adam to come over rather than just calling your connections is that if you could make a connection, maybe Adam could drive out so that you could stay home with your daughter, right? I guess so. Okay. Um, by the time Adam left, you had not reached a connection, right? We both, yeah. We couldn't find anybody. Okay. And then at some point, um, drugs are in your house, right? They were there when I woke up in the morning. So when you want to reach somebody, you reach ish by Facebook? Um, probably just texted. Okay. Just a message on the phone. Yeah. Yes. And when he gets back to you, he gets back to you, right? Yes. And, but he does get back to you, right? I, that night? Anytime. Yeah. Okay. And when he gets back to you, uh, you let him know what you're looking for, and um, he actually delivers it to you, right? Yeah, or I would pick it up. Okay. And on this night, um, you weren't leaving because you were alone with your daughter, Correct. right? And um, so one of the people that you probably reached out to was Ish, right? Yeah. And certainly by the time that Adam <laughs> left, you had not seen Ish, right? Correct. And um, when you talk to the police, uh, I'm sorry, to the grand jury, about the guns, um, you let them know that all three guns, the AR-15, a shotgun, and a third, and I think you accidentally called it an AR-47, is that right? Do you remember that? Uh, possibly. Okay. And that was just a mistake because they're both kind of assault rifles, right? Right. Okay. And, um, sorry, I lost my frame of reference here. Oh, heck. I'll move on. Um, or maybe you remember, did you say that you didn't know any distinctive features of the AR-15 and the shotgun because you never really looked at them? Yeah. Okay. But they were guns that you moved from the couch to the bed and back, They were right? in cases. Cases? Yeah. Not blankets? Mm, no. Not two They're blankets. They big cases under the bed. I don't. I know the cases and the guns were under the bed, but I don't know if the guns were in the cases. Okay. And uh, at the grand jury, uh, I read on direct that they actually asked you about your statement to the police the night that you got arrested, and you only sort of remembered that statement, right? Correct. And uh, you said that that would never happen uh, because you would never leave... Uh, somebody at your house and say lock the door because Chris would kill you if you did that, right? Right. You didn't want Chris to think that you were doing very reckless things while he was gone, right? 
uh, he knew what was going on. He was involved <laughs> with what was going on as well. Okay. But the time that you had Ish over the, um, the l things like letting Ish borrow uh, or take the 380, that was when Chris was not around, right? Correct. Because Chris would not approve of that behavior, Correct. right? Okay. Um, So, um, you said, I believe, that you had told the police all along that uh, you had given the 380 to Ish more than once. Correct. And um, you said that that wasn't something that you were hiding, right? No. Okay. And at the grand jury... You were asked uh, we talked uh, the prosecutor was asking you about whether you, in the four guns that you talked about the 45 and at least a couple of big ones that you called them the AK47 and the shotgun did Ish ever hold, use, or fire any of these? And you said no. Do you remember that? Um, no. Um, okay. And I will. Um, you were asked if he ever hold, did he ever hold, use, or fire any of Chris's guns that you know of? And you said no, right? Correct. And then you said, the only thing I can think of is maybe the 45 when we were together hanging out. Correct. And that's what you told the grand jury, right? Correct. You did not tell them that yes, Ish held and possessed Chris's gun, the 380. I let him borrow it, yes. You did not tell the grand jury that when they specifically asked you that question. Is that fair to I, say? I, the, the way you're saying it, it's like I'm thinking like when we're in the house, like we didn't fire it, I didn't mean it like that. I'm going to give you a copy of your grand jury transcript. And I know that you don't want to be too close for going back and forth to people um, who are ill. So I won't linger over you while we read, okay? If you hold on to that page from the front, it says it's the grand jury Henry investigation of uh, Miss Montgomery. And then it has Kimberly Fran, March 21, 2022, right? Correct. And this, have you seen this before? No. So you didn't get a chance to review your grand jury testimony when you talked today, right? No. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look at page 36, tell me if I read this correctly. 
And I think you'll actually have to go to the page before to see that we're talking about, or you all are talking about ish. Uh, about page 35, line 15. Uh, actually, let's make it line 13. Uh, do you remember where he lived at this time? You said, I don't think he had, I think he was living in his car, to be honest. And the question was, ish? And you said, yeah. And you were asked, do you know where he would park? Do you remember? And you said he would park at random places. Uh, you were asked, would he go to your house on Russell Street at all? And you said, yeah. And he, you were asked, was he there any regularly? How often? And you said, if I needed drugs, he would come by. And you were asked, was he selling drugs at the time? And you said, yeah. And you were asked, what kind of drugs? And you said, crack. And you were asked, anything else? And you said, no. Um, you were asked, was he one of the people that you and Adam might have tried to call that night to get crack? And you said, possibly, yeah. And you were asked, do you remember him coming over that night at all? And you said, no. And you were asked, was he there all night at all? Was he there at all that night that Adam was there? And you said, no. And then you were asked, so he ever, there's a pause. So we talked about maybe four guns and you said, uh-huh. And the question was, uh, the 45 and at least a couple of big ones, you called them AK-47 and the <coughs> shotgun, and you said, yeah. And you were asked, did Ish ever hold, use, or fire any of those? And you said, no. And then you were asked, did he ever hold, use, or fire any of Chris's guns that you know of? And you said, no. Is that right? Correct. And that was not true, right? Correct. You knew that he had held uh, and used or at least taken the 380, right? Correct. Uh, with your permission, right? Correct. And that is not something that you told the grand jury, right? Correct. But going on from there, uh, you were asked how certain are you of that. And then you said, the only thing I think of is maybe he held the 45 when we were together hanging out because that's the one I take with me, but I would, they stayed under the bed and I didn't bring them out. Correct. So I think that you said that you let him take the 380 and the 45 when he took the car sometimes, right? Like twice total. Okay. And that's not what you told the grand jury, right? Correct. <clears throat> and it was to the grand jury that you said when they asked you if Ish knew where the other guns were you said I think he did because he was a friend of mine so I'm sure it came up right yes so Ish did know about the guns under the bed right he could have yeah and when you talk about what you did that weekend or sorry, not weekend, while Chris was gone, you've had days of using drugs, right? Correct. And you're not done, right? Correct. You want more, right? I guess, yeah. You have been, I don't even know if you call it a bender, but you have been days with drugs, you're out of drugs, you want more, right? Right. And one of the people that you reach out to is Manny, right? Possibly. Okay. Adam is not your friend, right? Mm, he was my friend. Okay. Let me go on. Well, 
Lost my place again, sorry. You and Kayla were friends, right? Correct. You were pregnant together? Correct. And I think you said occasionally you babysat her children? Correct. Or her ch Seamus, just Seamus? All of them. Okay. Um, and... Uh, Sometimes, once or twice, they came over to your place, right? Correct. Together, right? Correct. But that wasn't a regular thing, right? Correct. Adam was over that night to try and assist you and he in getting drugs, right? Correct. And it didn't work, right? Correct. And were you crashing? Yeah, I was tired. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Well, you've been going for days. Uh, right, so time, I was right? tired. Huh? Yeah, I was tired. And it's kind of one of those tireds that doesn't feel real good, right? I guess. One of those tireds that make you want more drugs rather than make you want to sleep, right? Correct. It is one of those tireds that drive you to just give me drugs, right? Correct. And that's not a sleepy tired, is it? It's your crashing, right? Correct. And um, the next day when Chris came home, you were not crashing, right? I don't recall. <clears throat> and you didn't have money on your own very much from Dunkin Donuts, right? I did. I had what I worked was my paycheck. Okay. And um, you spent a lot of that money on drugs, right? Right. And you spent your money on drugs while Chris was gone that particular trip, right? Probably. And when you were contacting Ish for more drugs, you didn't have money. I don't recall. I probably had money if I was trying to call people. <laughs> okay. So I think, yeah. Um, actually, back in the grand jury, at one point you said that you had like $40, and then you said... You really didn't remember if you had money, right? That sounds right. So you just sort of pick a number, but then when you don't actually know, right? Well, I wouldn't call people if I didn't have money. Well, one of the things that you have done in the past is let Ish use your car and the, take the 380 in exchange for drugs, right? Correct. That's not money. That's a different form of barter, right? Correct. So you would contact Ish if you didn't have money and you wanted drugs? Correct. And Chris is still a bit bothered by the missing guns, right? When? Now, these days. You and he communicate over your daughter, right? Right. And um, it still bothers him that those guns are missing, right? He says he doesn't care. He never wants to see them again. Okay. okay. And... Uh,
When you were arrested in December of 2019, um, they let you go home uh, after you talked to them about the guns, right? I don't remember that, but I was only there for a few hours, and then I left. Okay. Um, you left to go home? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And um, you never got convicted for those charges, right? No. Uh, they were dropped, right? Right. Essentially, they were dropped because you said that you would go to rehab, right? Correct. And do you know if anything can happen about those charges down the road? I have no idea. Okay. If I may have a moment, Your Honor, I seem to have misplaced some. You said that uh, you had pawned the wedding ring um, two months prior to uh, Chris coming home and finding his guns are missing, right? Correct. And uh, you've pawned other things as well, right? Correct. And sometimes you've borrowed money from other people to try and get those pawned items back before Chris came home, right? Mm, possibly. Okay. Because you didn't want Chris to know that you were doing this, pawning things or... I didn't care because we hated each other. Okay. So you didn't care if Chris knew like you pawned a TV at one point? I did not care. Okay. Thank you. Do you know? I'm going to move this back here. Do you remember those earlier statements that you gave? No. They weren't the truth, though, right? No. In, in February of 2022, you sat down and you told the truth. Correct. You said, I pawned a ring. Correct. Sustained bleeding. You described items that had been allegedly taken that night. Yes. Okay. Attorney Smith asked you why you never said Ish was there that night. Correct. In your first statement, in your third statement, in your second statement, in your grand jury testimony, you've never said Ish was there that night. Correct. And that's because he wasn't there that night. Correct. Sustained. Was Ish there that night? No, not that I'm aware of. Who was there that night? Adam was there that night with me. That's it. Attorney Smith asked you if Ish came after Adam left. I didn't see him, if he did. When you went to sleep that night, who was there? Just me and Adam. When you passed out, who was there? Me and Adam. Attorney Smith asked you about your grand jury testimony. Yes. And she was reading it. Yes. And she asked you if, if Ish knew where those guns were in your home. Yes. And you said, I think I don't know. Right. And she read something to you. Yes. So, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. So... I'm handing you your grand jury testimony. Ignore the highlights. There's a box around several lines. Yes. And I want you to read those to the grand jury, the, the statements that are within that box. Okay. So Starting with Q or A. 
Okay, it says, did Ish know that they, that there were other guns? And I said, I think he did know. Why do you say that? Because he was a friend of mine, so I'm sure it came up. Okay, and you can set that aside. So Ish may have known that there were other guns in your home? Possibly, yes. Would you be surprised that you were never asked if Ish knew where the guns were? One more time. Would you be surprised that in that grand jury statement, the testimony that you gave a grand jury, you were never asked if Ish knew where the guns were that in your home? Right. Do you remember being asked if Ish knew that? No. And that statement that you just read was about whether Ish knew that there were other guns. Right. We agree on that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Attorney Smith asked you if Adam was your friend back in 2019. Was he? Yes. He was also your supplier? Yes. You'd call him if you needed, would you call him if you needed drugs? Yeah, yes. Have you ever admitted involvement in the theft of these guns? No. Were you involved in the theft of these no. guns? No. Um, Attorney Smith asked you about the rumors that you'd heard? Yes. Specifically statements from Mike Sullivan? Yes. What did Mike Sullivan tell you happened to that night? He told me, he didn't say anything. I asked if Adam, if it was Adam who took them, and he just shook his head yes. Okay. So he didn't say anything. This is gonna sound like a silly question. Do you know what happens when you're asleep? What happens around you? No. Did Ish come over that night? Not to my knowledge. Did you barter anything that night for drugs? No. Did you trade those guns for drugs? No. Did you trade anything in the house that night for drugs? No. Thank you, no further questions. I know she can keep it. Cause I'll be. I got two. Right. Yeah. yeah. One of the first things that you said on direct was that your early statements were a lie. Is that right? They weren't the greatest statements because I wasn't in the right mind. Okay. So when the state the prosecutor asked those early statements were a lie, you said yes. Are you qualifying that now? Were they a lie or not? I never lied, but they weren't the great, they weren't, I don't know how to say it. So you didn't lie back then is what you're saying? You've I've never lied. I've always said I had Adam come over, we hung out, he fell asleep, I fell asleep, I woke up, I saw the thing on the table in the morning, the back door was open, and that is all I know. Okay, and if you said that you saw Adam in the morning and told him to lock up behind you. I don't remember that at all. If you said that, yeah, would that have been true as well? Mm, no. Okay. We'll ask others if you said it, but if you said that, was that a lie? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess. 
So when the prosecutor asked you to read a portion of the grand jury about Ish, Okay, and this is uh, after, on page 36, and I read that portion that came, did Ish, it's referring to Ish, did he ever hold, use, fire any of Chris's guns that you know of? No. Is that right? Correct. And you knew that he used or held the 380 because you let him... allow some latitude attorney smith but we're not going over everything again no okay okay <clears throat> the objection is overruled you knew that he held the 380 right because you'd let him take it with him with the car right right but the way the question was was confusing i let right. him borrow it they didn't really ask me that Right, they asked, you were asked, did he ever hold, use, fire any of Chris's guns that you know of, right? Correct. And then on the next page, you sort of describe maybe the 45 while we were together, right? That's on the top of page 47. All right. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And then you were asked, uh, the prosecutor said, just so I understand better, would people kind of just use drugs as a group at your place? And you said kind of yes, right? Correct. And the prosecutor said, what do you mean by kinda? And you said, I mean yes, right? Correct. And then he said, would, the, would any of these guns ever come out during that? And you said no, correct? Correct. And the prosecutor asked, why not? Right? Correct. And you said, because I didn't want people to really know I had them. Right? Correct. And then the prosecutor said, did Ish know that there were any other guns? And you said, I think he did know. Right? Correct. And uh, it was at, the prosecutor asked, why do you say that? And you said, because he was a friend of mine, so I'm sure it came up, right? I'm just assuming, because even on Chris's Facebook, he has his profile picture shooting the gun. So it's like, I just assume. Okay. But that's what you told the grand jury when right. you were talking to them, Correct. right? Yep. Yes. And uh, you had moved the guns from under the bed to the couch area, right? I think I did, but I'm not 100%. Well, you certainly told the grand jury that, right? Right. And you told the police that, right? Correct, that I could have, yes. Okay. <coughs> and when you said, when you sleep, um, you don't necessarily know what's going on, right? Right. But when we are talking about your sleep on the night before Chris got home, we're talking about the kind of thing that hits you when you've had days of crack cocaine, right? Right. That just keeps you wired and keeps you buzzing, right? Right. And when you feel like you're coming down, you don't want to, right? Right. You're going to do everything for drugs, right? No. You want drugs really bad, right? I guess so. You don't want sleep, right? I think I needed sleep by that time. Absolutely, because you are just wired to the hilt, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. <sighs> Go ahead, Attorney Knowles. Thank you. Um, final question. Attorney Smith uh, discussed you wanting to do anything for drugs that night you'd been on you'd been up for three days straight what did you do that night he slept thank you <laughs> one question okay i slept 
You may step down. Any objection? No. Right, you may be excused. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do now is we'll take a 10-minute mid-afternoon break, and then we'll uh, go for the rest of the day, okay? Please rise for the jurors. State may call its next witness. Right. Sir. Be careful. Why should we please? Just be careful going around here. Okay, sir. If you could just stay standing and raise your right hand, and I'm going to ask you: Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. You can have a seat. Um, can you start by stating and spelling your first and last name for the record? Mark Reed, M A R K R E E D. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? A little nervous? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, where you're currently living? In Bristol. And how long have you lived there? Not that long. How long if you had to guess? Like a couple months. Yeah. Where were you living before Bristol? Uh, the motel. Okay. Um, was that also in Bristol? Uh, no, it was in uh, Ashland. How about before that? Uh, before that, I was staying with a friend. And before that, I was in prison. Okay. Um, were you in prison here in New Hampshire? Yeah, Concord. Concord. Why were you in prison? Because uh, I got arrested in Franklin and uh, I went to jail and then something happened there. I got a new charge there as a conspiracy to, commit, co conspiracy to commit theft by extortion. Okay. And then that's when I went to prison. Uh, were you, you were convicted, obviously, if you yeah. were in prison? Did you go to trial or did you accept responsibility? No, I, yeah, I took the deal. Okay. Um, Silly question, but was prison a good experience for you? No, I hated it. But I mean, I learned my lesson. <coughs> um, have you made lifestyle changes since release? Yeah, I'm sober. Um, I'm trying to get my own apartment, uh, my license back, car, I'm trying to do everything. It's just, you know, it's rough. Is it a constant struggle for you? Oh, yeah. When you said you're sober, um, when did that change happen? When I went to prison. So that's what it took for you to become sober? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when did you go to prison? Uh, it was October 10th, 2020. Um, no, wait, sorry. I went to jail that day. I went to prison, I think it was March or April or something like that. Of 20? 20, yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. um, when I asked you, you, you said you currently live in Bristol. Who do you live with? My mom and my grandmother and my brother. Okay. So I want to turn your attention to back in 2019, specifically between June 2019 and November 2019. <laughs> Where were you at in life back then? I was, a, I was a drug addict, selling drugs, doing drugs, anything really to make money. Uh, didn't have anywhere to live, I was homeless. Uh, it was when, a bad time. It was a bad time. When you say you were doing anything to make money, was that to support your, your uh, you said you were a drug addict, to support your addiction? Yeah. How were you making money? Selling drugs, selling guns, anything, anything to get my hands on. Sorry, let me back up. Um, I want to unpack all of that. Uh, when you say you were addicted to drugs, what drugs were you using back then? Heroin, meth, 
uh, Xanax, Klonopins, anything. And when you say you were selling drugs, what, what drugs were you selling? Heroin, meth, mostly those two. Heroin and meth? Mm-hmm. You also said you would sell firearms? Yeah. And can you explain that for me? Um, well, I, I knew different people that I can get them from, um, and I did. I got them cheap, and just I knew other people that would take them, and I would flip them because there's quick money in it. Let me ask you this, Mark. Are you are you okay with me calling you Mark? Yeah. So back then in 2019, were you able to legally possess a firearm? Yeah. How about now? No. And is that because of your conviction? Yeah, I'm a felon. And you said you could buy firearms for cheap and then soft load them? Yeah. Was that easy money? Mm-hmm. So back in that time frame that we talked about, did you know someone named Adam Montgomery? Yeah. How did you know him? Uh, well, I first met him. He hit me up on Facebook saying that we went to high school together, and uh, then we like hung out once. And I don't know. After that, I realized I never met him. I never went to high school with him. And um, after that, we just started talking more. Before before I figured out I didn't know him, we we talked more and. Uh, just started like, you know, making plans to do things to make money and hanging out and shit. So I'm going to ask you to move a little closer. There's a microphone right in front of you to your left. Oh, yeah. Um, and just I want to make sure that everything you say is, is being picked up. Right. Um, <clears throat> so if I heard correctly and correct me if I'm wrong, he reached out to you via Facebook mm-hmm. saying you went to high school together. OK. And then you said you hung out. Yeah. Okay. How how often would you hang out with the defendant? Not that much. I think in total, like three times, four times, something like that. It was not a lot. Did the two of you have a drug connection? What do you mean? Did you do drugs together? Yeah. What drugs would you do? Meth. I would do heroin by myself, but he would do meth with me. Um, in those limited actual face-to-face interactions you had with him, did you ever have uh, an overnight with him, like spend the night in the same place as him? Yeah, uh, one time. So, so sorry, I, I don't want you to elaborate on that. Just, oh, okay. Um, a yes or no. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, did you conduct regular business transactions with the defendant? Yes. Um on one occasion, did he offer to sell you his family pet? Yes. And had you met that pet before? Yes. <coughs> so I mentioned Adam Montgomery. Uh, do you see him in the courtroom here today? Yeah. Can you point to him and identify an article of clothing he's wearing? A white shirt. And can the record reflect the witnesses identified the defendant? The record shall so reflect. Um, did you ever visit the defendant's home? Yes. And was that here in Manchester? Yes. Do you remember the address? I think it was 70-something Guilford Street or something. Do you remember uh, who he was living with at the time? Uh, there was the dog and there was the Kayla, Kayla, right? I think that's her name, Kayla, Kayla, something like that. And the kid... Okay. And when you say uh, you think Kayla, was that an adult or a child? An adult. Was that the defendant's partner, or do you know? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, And so how many times did you go to his address on Guilford Street? I think it was once, once or twice. And during those two occasions, was there anyone else there? Uh, did you counsel approach? 
The objection is sustained. You may rephrase the questions. So again, Mark, if you can move that mic actually closer to you so council can hear. Yeah. You said, did you say you went there once or twice or just once? Once or twice. Okay. The times that you went there, were there any other individuals at the home? Uh, just uh, Kayla and the baby. Okay. So you mentioned the defendant reaching out to you on Facebook back then? Yeah. Saying you went to school together? Was that the primary mechanism that he used to, to reach out to you? Yeah. Did you have a working phone at the time? Did I? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, but it was Facebook Messenger that we're yeah. talking about? Yes. <coughs> yes, you may. So, Mr. Reed, I'm handing you what's been marked for identification as States Exhibit 34. And I'm just going to ask you to take a look at that. And you can go through it. Just look up when you're done. All right. Um, do you recognize what that is? Yeah. And, and what is it? <coughs> Messages between us on Facebook. Okay. And can you do me a favor and turn to the last page? So the bottom message on that page, if you can look at the left, the box to the left, yep. there should be a number. 1131. Okay. Um, would it surprise you that you exchanged back and forth 1131 messages with the defendant? That is a lot. That is surprising. <laughs> um, and what was the date of that last message? 4-7-2020. Uh, okay. Um, and if you can flip back to the first page. The first message, what was the date on it? Uh, it was 7 1 2019. So you can set that aside. Okay. Sorry, are those the messages you exchanged with the defendant? Yes. Um, you can set that aside. Uh, I want to go back. You said you were, uh, you were in prison at, at one point. In, uh, 2020. Were you approached by police officers in relation to this case at some point? Yes. And during that interaction with them, did you uh, did you consent to the search of your electronic devices, your specifically your phone and your Facebook account? Yes. Judge May? Yes. Okay. And have you had an opportunity to compare that with the messages that you still have? Yes. And let me back up. All those messages that I just showed you, the over 1,100, are those still on your phone? Yeah. Still on your Facebook account? Yes. Okay. Um, and is that the items that I just handed you? Is that a fair and accurate representation of the messages that you exchanged between uh, back and forth with the defendant? <laughs> between September 25th, 2019 and October 3rd of 20, October 4th rather of 2019. Yes. Same messages? Yes. So at this point, judge, I would. Um, at this point, your honor, I move to strike the identification and offer of support. Any objection? Objection to 35. 35. The idea is stricken on exhibit 35. It's entered as a full exhibit. Um, 
you still have the exhibit mark. Yeah. So I'm going to ask that you read the first message on the first page. It should be in the top right. I miss you too, Doug. I wish you were. Should I like say what it said? It bleeped out, or just read the F? Um. So is there a redaction in, in part of the message? Yeah. Uh, I know what it's supposed to say, but it doesn't say it. That's fine. You can just say F. All right. I miss you too, Doug. I wish you were F close the case because I'd be there every day. I mean, dude, even Tilton's a F and Hall. I mean, a F an hour drive from where I'm at right now, bro. You F 45 minutes north of there. So it's like I want to come up there and kick it and sh S, bro, but I don't get the bread, bro. Me and my wife and my kids about to be out of the house in like two weeks, bro. So I'm trying to save up the F bread right now, hopefully to get us a place to go, bro. Like if you can make me some F plays, do me do make me any place bro like and i'll come out there and then i would like to come out for like a stick but you make me some place dog and i'll come out and what's the date associated with that message that you just read uh, it's 9 25 2019. and so it sounds like the defendant is just and that's from the defendant to you yes okay and it says incoming Yep. Okay. Um, it sounds like the defendant is describing being kicked out of their sustain. The defendant mentions bread. Yeah. What does that mean? Money. So I need money. Mm hmm. All right. The idea is stricken. Uh, they're entered as full exhibits. Yes, you may. Um, so, Mark, I'm handing you what's been marked for admitted as state's exhibit, exhibits 8 through 17. And I'm just going to ask you to take a look at those and look up when you're done. Do you recognize those exhibits? Yes. What are they? They're messages from my phone on Facebook between me and Adam. Okay. Um, and are those fair and accurate photographs of the, the messages that were on your phone? Yes. Do you recognize the phone that's in those? Yeah. It's those mine. Letters? Yeah. Okay. Um, and your honor, at this point, I'd ask to publish. Yes, you may. Okay, and starting with the first image that I handed you, Mark, if you could just describe what's depicted. He's telling me where he lives and that he can come to me, but I don't know. And so that address that's mentioned there, the 77 Guilford Street, is that where you met the defendant? Yes. Phone 
Is that a phone number that you, you, you would use to communicate with the defendant? Yeah. Uh, I'm skipping to two. Um, and so this is the October 3rd, 2019, okay. 1026. And if you could just read that communication, starting with the first bubble, it looks like a, a call. Says you missed a call from messenger user. Okay, and the next one. You were Mark. Hit me up, dog. I got something you're really going to like. You got to hit me up now, ASAP. Oh, sorry, just a sec. So the person that's writing, I got something you're really going to like. Um, is that an incoming? So is that you that wrote that, or is that someone else? No, um, that's somebody else who wrote to me. Okay. And this is your communication with the defendant? Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> and if you can go on to the next message. Uh, you got to hit me up ASAP. You're going to miss out on it, bro. If you don't hit me up now, you should girls phone something and call. Uh, you missed a call from messenger user. Six zero three eight five eight three three three. Okay, so the individual is providing you some phone numbers. Okay, you can go on to the next exhibit. If you could just read the exhibit number that you're on. Uh. 12. 12. Okay. And so you can read 12. L then you're going to miss out cuz I'm not messaging this shit. What the fuck, bro? Come on. There's a house phone there. You guys have cell phones up there. You guys have some type of service. Bro, Facebook is too choppy and it's too notch. I don't need shit like, oh, sorry. Sh S like this on messages and then Facebook dog you got okay buddy I called you first cuz yeah I called you first because I know you were going I don't know what it says underneath that one going something like this I can't read what it says underneath that yeah that's fine right. um, let's go to the next message. All right. There's no way you can call. Just let me know that because I don't want to sit here and keep playing this game. I got a hundred other people that be looking for a dog. All right, let's go to 13. How much I want, that's from me. So you wrote how much I want? Yeah. And what was the response to that? Uh, he said, which one do you want, both of them or which one? And I said, price of each. So at the top of those, that exhibit, 13 minutes, like there's some other messages. Uh, or how much I want. Sorry. I mixed it up. It's okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, you've reviewed those, they're fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask you to turn back to the Exhibit 35 that I handed you. And I'm looking at page two. And the top of page two, if you can start um, with the incoming message, Al, then you're going to miss out. Yeah. 
Oh, then you're gonna miss out because I'm not messaging this S. And then I put what? What the f, bro? Come on. There's a house phone there. You guys have cell phones up there. You guys have some type of service, bro. Facebook is too choppy and it's too top, too notch. I don't need s like this on messages and then Facebook dog. You got okay, buddy. I called you first. <laughs> Yeah, I called you first because I know you were going to want this, but there's no way you can call. Just let me know that because I don't want to sit here and keep playing this game. I got a hundred other people that be looking for a dog. Okay, and then is there a call after that? An incoming call? Uh, yeah. Okay, and if you can go to the next message. Alright. It will, don't ask me for this S later on, bro, because you're slacking right now. I have something right now that you've been looking for, for a grip, bro. Hit me up ASAP. And then I write, yo, if it's metal, I want it. And let me stop you right there. What does that mean? You wrote that, if it's, yo, if it's metal, I want it. What does that mean? Guns. Guns? Okay. If you can go to the next message. Uh, it, Sir, I'm just going to ask you to please keep your voice up. It's a big room and everybody needs to hear you. All right, sorry. Um, it is, bro. It's the big boys. How much? If you can flip to the next page and continue. Uh, I can't hold it. First come, first serve. Damn, bro. Unsent. You're right in damn, bro. Yeah. Okay. And then there's three unsent messages. Okay. And let's talk about that. Um, those are incoming messages? Yes. That were unsent? Yeah. Um, what were they? Uh, pretty sure they were the pictures. Pictures of what? Uh, the, um, the pump and the AR. Okay, the pump and the AR. And when you say the pump, what does that mean? Shotgun. Okay, so pump action shotgun? The 12 gauge, yeah. 12 gauge. Um, can you describe the pictures to the best of your recollection? Ugh. All I remember is that the, the 12 gauge had something special on it. That's why he wanted more for it and not what I offered him. I don't know. I know it was black. Um, I can't really remember much. Were the photos, were, were the firearms that you just referenced, were they resting on something or being held? I think they're resting on something. Okay. Um, let's go to the next message after the unsent photographs. How much? You can continue. So you wrote how much? Yeah. And then uh, I want... And then he put, which one do you want, both of them or which one? And then I put price of each. And then again, unsent message. Do you recall what that unsent message was of? I don't. Okay. Um, let's go to the next message. But we can work something out. What's some other sh S? This is why I need you to call me. And that was from the defendant? Yeah. But I literally have people blowing me up right now as we speak. But you, my dude, so I called you first. Uh, and then there's just, just a bunch of zeros. So there's a phone call, it appears? Yeah. And that's an incoming phone call? Uh, yeah. If you can flip to the next page and continue reading. <laughs> I want the 12 gauge, but I don't got 3V. And let me stop you there. 3V, what does that mean? Um, I, shit. I think it was three sticks at the time. And what, what do you, when you say three sticks, what does that mean? Uh, a stick is 10 grams of dope. Of dope? Yeah. And sorry, I, I, again, just Heroin. another detail. What is dope? Heroin. Heroin. Yeah. 
so three sticks of heroin mm -hmm. and how much is a stick it all depends where you go and who you get it from but um usually like 200 bucks sorry not the price but the quantity do you know oh, the 10 grams 10 grams yeah so that been 30 grams for 30 three grams. sticks um <clears throat> and you can continue reading all right um because eight got to pick up and down. Uh, I'll take it. How much? I'll take a stick for the pump. But I also need like 80 bucks cash. So let me know. And so those were from the defendant. I'll take it. I'll take a stick for the pump. Sustained. The messages that you just read. Are those incoming or outgoing? Incoming. And so you left off, so let me know. You can continue. Yeah. Because if not, so what's the deal, bro? Because I want, I can't wait around all day. Is this a yes and no, maybe so, what's going on? Uh, and then I put, I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. And does it continue? Yeah. Hi, man. I mean, if you... Get to me first, then awesome. But you're trying to figure it out, so that's basically saying no or that you don't have it. So I told you, buddy, I can't wait around with it, bro. So, I mean, if you hit me up before anybody else does, then it's yours. But if somebody else comes here with the bread, then I got to take. Because we need the bread ASAP, bro. We're about to be kicked out of my, of my any day now house. And I think you mentioned earlier, but... Bread refers to money. Yeah. You can go to the next page. Yo. And then after that, there's a bunch of, uh, it's incoming call. And then again, yo. And that's an incoming? Yeah. Yeah. Is that incoming? Yep. And, and the next then, message? What? The next message? It says, you missed out and is that incoming or outgoing it's incoming okay and now it's outgoing i said can you send a pic and then again for me yo okay the you missed out is incoming though yeah okay. um so you can set those aside when you would communicate with the defendant via this facebook account how did you know, how would you know that you were communicating with the defendant? Well, because um, when I'm talking to him, it's like when I'm talking to anybody else. If you if you know who you're talking to or if you talk to that person before, it doesn't matter how they say it. Like, you don't have to hear their voice and know it's them. Just the words they say and how they use their words. Plus, uh, later on in some of the messages, I, I was talking to Kayla and she wrote her name in the way she writes, it, you can tell the two apart. Okay, did he have a particular way of speaking or referring to you? Yo, dog. Does anyone else call you that? No. When you would arrange to meet with the defendant, who would arrive? Huh? When you would arrange meetups with the defendant, who would arrive? Uh, him. Okay. Not Kayla? No. I think you testified that you still have the communication on your phone. Yes. And in your Facebook account? Yes. Do you still have the same Facebook account? Yes. And how about the, um, I'm sorry, how about the uh, profile that you communicated with? That I was talking to? Is it still in existence? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's deactivated, but it's still on my mind. Like I can see everything there. Just there's no name now. There's no name now. Yes. Back when you communicated <laughs> with that account, was there a name? Yes. What was the name? Adam Montgomery.
did you want to purchase the the firearms? I mean, I did, yeah, but I I didn't end up doing it. Did you want to purchase both or just one? Just one. Was that the shotgun? Yes. Why? I don't know. I just, they're easier to get rid of. I got just a moment. One of the messages that you, you read aloud mentioned Facebook being too notch. Do you know what that means? I, I assume that it's like... Well, hold on one minute. Basis? Go ahead. You may answer the question. All right. Um, I'd assume that it's like... it's. Objection. Now the answer is... Uh, approach. Sustained. You may rephrase the question. Mark, do you know what that means? Two notch? Facebook's two notch? It's too smart. Like it's. Overruled. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's always there. You know, it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to I'd say it. Um, so it's always there. Yeah, the I guess it never goes there. away, you know? It never goes away. Yeah. Okay, and then um, we discussed, I think, some of the messages you read, maybe the one that's up on the screen. Um, it discusses, you, you read, me, um, message was unsent? Yeah. What does that mean, based on your experience with Facebook? That the person that sent it, unsent it, they, uh, I don't know, I guess, deleted it or whatever. Okay. It would Have say you, unsent. Is that something you're familiar with on Facebook? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Hi. Hi. I'm Carrie Smith, and I have some questions, but I just feel too far away from you. So, um, can I call you Mark? Yes. Now, do you have the uh, exhibits that are uh, the regular pages, not the photographs? Do you have them there with you? Uh, 35. Exhibit 35, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, let's just get a couple of things clear for the jury as they look through this later. Uh, there's a time column in those um, pages, right? Yes. And let's look at the first message. Uh, it's one, two, three, fourth, me third message that says, your mark, hit me up, dog. I want something you really gotta gonna like this. Do you see that message? Yes. And going over to the time column, it says two twenty nine oh two. Two twenty nine twenty. Thank you. Uh, two twenty nine twenty, right? Yep. But your phone actually has a different time, right? What do you mean? There's different times reflected on your phone messages than are on this piece of paper, right? I'm confused. I'm sorry. I understand. So, do you have the photographs here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get a photograph that shows the message time on your phone, okay? Let's see. Here's one.
Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe they are at the same time. Can you send a pic? Is send at 344? Is that right? Hold on, let me check. I think I'm going to take that back. They are the same time, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're the same. And you said, by the way, can you send a pic? That refers to the dog, right? Uh, I don't know. I think it should. Can I go back and reread? Sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. So um, we'll go through some of those messages. And it seemed like from what I saw on direct, it's easier for you to read from the pages than it is from the photographs. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So um, let's talk about the message at 245.12. Uh, it's an incoming message, and it says, I have something right now that you've been looking for, for a grip, bro. Hit me ASAP. Is that right? Yep. And from the word grip, you understood that it referred to a gun. No, uh, a grip means a long time. The metal was what I identified as the gun. Okay. So, um... You asked, yo, if it's metal, I want it. Yes. Meaning that you would take, you you were in the market for a gun. Guns. Not necessarily for yourself, but to flip it. Yes. And um, one of his responses was, um, oh, I keep talking about his. Your Honor, at this time, can we introduce the stipulation with regard to the address? Any objection from the state? No objection. All right. Good. Uh, Attorney Smith, stipulation A. This to be read now. Is that accurate? <coughs> yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read to you a stipulation. This is a this is a stipulation or an agreement by the parties. The parties stipulate as fact that the October 3rd, 2019 Facebook communication that Mark Reed had regarding the sale slash purchase of firearms was through a Facebook account, account number 1000090070700. Five eight zero three, that Mark Reed had communicated with Adam Montgomery through regularly. I'm going to read that again. Okay, the parties stipulate as fact that the October third, two thousand and nineteen Facebook communication that Mark Reed had regarding the sale slash purchase of firearms was through a Facebook account that Mark Reed had communicated with Adam Montgomery through regularly. Okay, uh, I didn't read the account number again because I know you all have that memorized. Go ahead. So we will be clear. As far as you're concerned, you are communicating with Adam Montgomery, right? Yes. Because you've communicated with him before on this address, right? Yes. And there's no doubt in your mind because of uh, the address, the dog that you recognized, and his manner of speaking, right? Yes. And one of the things in his manner of speaking um, is a little bit in code, right? 
Yes. It's like uh, I got a hundred other people that be looking for a dog, right? Yeah. That was kind of code. Yeah. And when he was talking about Facebook being, what was that word that was used? Top notch. Okay. Um, that was code, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, so you said if it's metal, I want it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, his response to you is, uh, it is, bro, it's the big boys. You asked how much, and kind of at the same time, it's like interchanging inner whatever uh, messages. I can't hold it first come, first serve, right? Yeah. So he's telling you that he can't hold it for you, right? Yeah. And um, he sends pictures, right? Yeah. And these pictures are with uh, the guns um, on something, right? Yeah. You said that they were actually on something, they weren't being held, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you were interested in the 12 gauge, you said, right? But when you, t I'm sorry, you have to say. Yes, sorry. It's okay. Uh, when you were having this conversation with Adam, you, he asked you, which one do you want? Both of them or which one? Right? Mm -hmm. And you asked, well, what's the price of them? Right? Yeah. So you weren't turning down either, right? No. You want more information. Yeah. <coughs> might be one, might be the other. Okay. And um, there was some sort of message that was sent and called back, right? Yeah. And then uh, there's a message that says, uh, we can work something out. Um, that's why I need you to call me, right? Yes. Um, he says, I literally have people blowing me up right now as we speak, but you, my dude, I called you first. Yep. And this, by the way, is around 2.51.49, exactly 2.51.49, right? Yes. And so you say that you want the 12 gauge, but you don't have the, 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 Purchasability. Yes. And um, the other thing is that you have to go pick it up if you get it, right? Pick, is that what pick up and down was? Oh, I had to go pick up and down. It was in meth and heroin, yes. Ah, so you're saying that you have drugs both that for up and down. Yes. As purchase abilities. Yes. Okay, so you're making the offer out there for what you have to be able to get the guns, right? Yes. And um, Adam says, I'll take it. Right? Uh, yes. And you say how much? Right? Yes. And he says, I'll take a stick for the pump, but I need 80 bucks in cash. Yes. So I think that you were saying a stick is 10 grams. 10 grams. Yeah. But you didn't have three sticks, and he agrees to take a stick and 80 bucks. Yes. And a stick is normally w worth $200? Usually. Okay. And that didn't work out, right? No. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have the $80 cash. Okay. And he couldn't hold it for you, right? Right. And so he told you later, can't hang around all day, right? Yes. And eventually it was that you missed out. Yes. In the meantime, uh, he let you know... Uh, he needs the bread ASAP because he's about to be kicked out any day, right? Yes. And that was sort of something you knew, or um, he had actually told you that that was why he wanted to sell his dog to you, right? Yes. That wasn't for you to resell on. That was for you, right? Say that again, please. The dog yes. was for you. Yes. 
if you wanted to buy it. Yes. Because he couldn't hold on to the dog because he was being evicted. Mm -hmm. And he sent you a picture of the dog with his child. Yes. Right? And that wasn't related to the business of buying and selling. That was hoping that you would take the dog because he was being evicted, right? Yes. And your felony was conspiracy to commit... Theft by extortion. Theft by extortion. And that was a crime that you committed while incarcerated. Yes. And uh, you got um, some time that could be suspended on that, right? You got time plus you could earn a suspension of some of the time, right? Yes. Okay. And the police, you went... That conviction was on 317-21. Sound right? Yes. And it was about a year later that police came talking to you about Adam. Yes. And um, you agreed to talk to him. Yes. Told him about the messages. I'm hiding nothing, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mark, I have a silly question for you, but what does first come, first serve mean? And the first person who gets there is theirs. Okay. Attorney Smith asked you about your conviction. Yes. And about your sentence. When police approached you at the jail, first of all, do you remember who you spoke with at the uh, prison? No, not. I know there was a marshal, and uh, I think the other one was a uh, Manchester detective. Does Detective Dunleavy sound? <coughs> I think so. And when you say marshal, U.S. Marshal Services? Yes. Yeah. I don't know his name. I forgot. Okay. Um, and so these gentlemen approached you, and they wanted to talk? Yes. Did they promise you anything? No. Throughout all of this, have you been promised anything? No. Did you ask for any favors? No. Did you ask for any deals? No. Did you say, let me out of prison? No. <laughs> I wish it worked like that, but no. So you've got nothing for your testimony? No. You just told the police what you knew? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Reed. No further questions, Judge. Right. So, uh, the, I have to get, find the, the um, police, when they came to you when you were in prison, um, your deal was complete, right? Yes. And you were serving your time, right? Yes. And you were earning that extra time to try and get out early, right? By doing um, uh, a focus. resident treatment unit there, yeah. I focus? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, not focus. Sorry. It was, um, uh, I was supposed to go to the, the focus, but I ended up being able to um, do an outside program, a sober living, and then re oh, a rehab, then sober living. But ah, so you were in the halfway house at the time? No. Oh, Okay. So anyway, um, you were earning your time out, right? Yes. And when did you get released? Uh, it was May 26th of last year, the day before my birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. So when the state asked if the police promised you anything, um, it was your intention, although you said it would have been nice if you could just do it that way, 
to put your head down, work through this, and make the changes that you wanted to, right? Yes. And you, um, uh, <coughs> you were not a felon when you were having this conversation with um, Adam Montgomery, right? No. It was after the fact that you got in jail and then in prison. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any objection? No. All right. You, you may step down. Thank you. Uh, and this witness is excused. Counsel approach? Do I? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've had an opportunity to talk to the lawyers about what we're going to be doing next. I think it makes sense to release you a little bit early today, so I'm going to release you now for the day. I want to remind you, as I will uh, every day, uh, do not do any independent research. Please make sure to avoid any television, newspaper, or online coverage. Um, I know there was a question that I received through one of our court officers about, you know, checking uh, your own personal online accounts, for example, you know, f because you may need to check something personal or have a communication, that's fine. But do not read anything about this case or the associated case related to Harmony Montgomery. So uh, make sure to avoid uh, any coverage at all. Uh, don't drive by any locations. Don't look up any witnesses. No independent research. Don't talk to anybody. Uh, not family members, friends, or each other. You'll have an opportunity to do that once uh, deliberations are concluded at the end of the case. Obviously, you'll talk to each other during deliberations, but beyond that, uh, not until after uh, the case is concluded. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time and attention today. 8.45 tomorrow morning for a 9 a.m. start. All right, jury. That's the latest from day one in the trial of New Hampshire versus Adam Montgomery. The weapons trial. Adam, the father of missing Harmony Montgomery, will be standing trial for her murder later in the year. We'll continue to cover all that action for you right here. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.